Hi everybody and a big welcome to a CDHTV gameplay with me and Pontus, joined by Samurai. Yo. And Rhetoric. What's up, dudes? Yes, I mean the deal. Listen, the last time I played with this in you guys twice, it was like an experiment. But I just, after playing the classic warrior queen so to say it just works so much better big surprise but i've decided actually this may be a little controversial i decided to cut lion's eye diamond because i'm just not smart enough to play that card and i think that there's some other interesting cards to just sub in and you can still do stuff with underworld breach and like brain freeze but just trying to always rely on that it just gets awkward so i'd rather just beat some face and you know made a couple variations on pongo's list so this is just a blue black Pretty fast lists, focused on like the normal Demeter stuff and the splashing some pirate. Polyrectos, uh, we brought it back. We're gonna use Brain Stealer and Sire to mess up some game plans. Uh, we're running some little bit more removal, but we didn't really change it much. I like the list, it's solid. Let's hope that we don't exile all our win cons this time. So I'm playing Paco Haldan. This is a Divergent deck with a Leveler and Fessence Oracle. So I win the game in an instant speedway like with Divergent Transformation. Other than that, it's just a basic Tamer, very controller deck with an annual breach package inside it as a secondary option. And with that, let's take a look at some opening hands. So when you play Paco and Haldan, it is very important you get a Haldan Paco, I mean, or a Haldan too, but Paco and the commander into play as fast as possible to accumulate value. And also because we are on the divergent strategy, we need two creatures in play in general anyway, we need some fast mana. We don't really have that here. We have Divergent, but Divergent can come later. That's like not necessary to have in your opening hand. So even with though we have our combo here, we're gonna mill again because we're not looking at like a turn two or turn three Paco. This hand has great cards in it for that. Sadly, we're actually in a starting position. So the Gemstone Caverns doesn't actually do anything. And Carp the Flowers has a chance of not doing anything either because if I start with Carpet in play, they're just gonna avoid putting islands into play. So in the end, I'm actually going to mulligan this hand as well. Going down to six. Now we are getting severely punished. We can't keep this. Going down to five. I can't keep this either. It's like a mountain and nothing. Down to four. Never punished. This four is absolutely amazing. It is better than all the other hands we have seen recently. It is a, not a dream start. I mean, down to four is still down to four, but we have a turn one rustic study. Also, we're not that far away from actually having our commander to play after that. Let's see if they have anything to uh, catch up to that. This is not gonna work. Yeah, there's a dark ritual, but we really wanna be at five mana. We have an Imperial Seal, which is normally good. Tobalt's Trickery and Pyrokinesis seem decent, but we have an Aether Flux, and I really don't want this in my opening hand because it's such a dead card. So not only are we slow, but we kind of have like a, low build up i'm gonna have to get a badlands if i want to keep this hand so then i would go badlands imperial steel and pray that someone doesn't exile the top card of my library yeah no thank you let's go see how our second seven look this is not playable there are no lands no mana source so we're going down to six our six is just as bad two mana imperial seal yet again praying that somehow this is our five we got nothing this is our four i am actually inclined to keep this We'll go ahead and mulligan these to the bottom. So if some reason a Dranith Magistrate does touch down, we're just going to Skull Clamp the Frog Wreck. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and pass this. You know, console, we have Force of Will as well for some interaction. So Ezeal is not going to be on turn one, but I think that's okay. We've got some value here we may get from other decks. So let's see what happens. I do this on the channel all the time. I keep the first seven just to experiment a little bit. Okay, take it away, Pontus. So do we gamble on a lamp? The answer is no, but almost. Let's go to the second side. No, this doesn't really have enough value. We just have two mana and like hopium from the brainstorm, and that's not really good enough. So let's move. Just one more piece of mana, and I would think this was kind of fine. But as we don't really have a guarantee to get to the Grimmolith turn two, I don't really want to gamble here. So let's go to five. Hopefully, we're drawing to some more stuff. Uh, if we draw second land, we have a pretty good turn two, actually, uh, where we can cast Commander into Rustic, which is really good. Yeah, this is a very good vibe. So let's go ahead and play with it. I think Pact is very far away from being relevant, and Psychrift as well. So yeah, seems really good. Let's go to the game. All right, guys, I, I hope you're ready for what's coming. I'm going to draw a card. Here's a land drop, Arid Misa. Crack that. Finding a Volcanic Island. Tapping that for blue, casting a mana crypt, 
and then following up with a turn one Ristic Study. And then I pass the turn. Go for it. Awesome. Mons, how many cards did you want to draw? A lot, please. Well, you guys heard the guy. I I apologize. I'm going to play a Skull Clamp. Going to cast a Mox Opal. Going to cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. Going to cast my Commander. I'll pass my turn. Now I have two impressive turns to top. So we'll see. We'll draw a card for turn. Okay. We are going to play a Thrawn Quarry. Okay. I have six cards in hand. Pass turn. Land turn is Swamp. Moxes. Tap Talisman. Cast a Felwar Stone. Not paying for a stick on Felwar Stone. Untap. Keep trigger. Heads is damage. That's tails, so no damage from the mana crypt. And draw a card for turn. So when I pass turn, I had two cards in my hand. Now I have 11. I've gained nine in a turn cycle. I'm going to begin by casting a Grim Monolith, not paying for Esper Sentinel. Go ahead and draw a card for it. Land for turn is a Flooded Strand. I will immediately sacrifice it, finding a Tropical Island. Now I have exactly five mana, red, green, and three, to cast my commander Puck Arcane Retriever. Going immediately to combat, attacking with Paco at... So my options are Pontus or Rhetoric. Samurai Deractos deck is a stack deck, so I don't really need to attack him because he's not really on Adnos. So in the priority of who I'm attacking here, Pontus has a lot of mana, which means that he's kind of close to an Adnos, but that is a mana vault, which means that he has to have a Dark Ritual in his hand to resolve the Adnos. Rhetoric has eight cards in his hand. The chance of him putting like a land, a dock set in play, and an Adnos is still pretty decent. So we're attacking at Rhetoric, the yellow player. Paco attack trigger. So I'm sword, that's good. A Noble Hierarch and a Mox Diamond, so he Paco grows to a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, I take, the, I take the damage. Discarding these two cards and passing the turn. I'm gonna tap two and play an Arcane Signet. I don't pay. I'm from Texas, we don't pay taxes. I'm gonna tap play a Dark Ritual. I have none. I'll crack the Lion's Eye Diamond and tip two, cast my commander, Tevish Zop. Doing my fools. Awesome. I've got one floating. I'm gonna uptick him, add two thralls. Look! We got a boy, and we got a dead girl, because I'm going to use the last remaining to equip it with Skull Clamp. Draw two cards. Ha ha! Play Nerza Saga, thank god. Lands, sweet glorious lands. <laughs> we'll tap and equip a Skull Clamp to the other thrall to draw two more. Yes, I will pass the turn. Sweet glory. Turn, draw a card for turn. All right, going to my second turn. Uh, at the beginning of the upkeep, I'm going to tap this for... Yeah, um, Vampiric Tutor. Not paying for Rhystic. I will first draw a card. So looking at this board state, that's definitely going to be a uh, Dockside, I think. So I'm going to pay to life and mental misstep on that. Mental misstep. You dog. Um, Trigger Esper, yeah. You can draw for your Esper Sentinel. Can't pay. Mm, pitch Intuition. Pay life. Force Will. I have no response to Force of Will. You get it. Thank you. Maybe we just get Mana Crypt and then we cast Najila for now so that we have at least like a blocker and some other stuff um, stake. But, you know, Najila like to be on the battlefield. So move to hand, shuffle. Okay. Drawing the card for turn. We will play a Plateau. We will also play a Mana Crypt. Triggers, indeed. You can draw. But I'll disappoint you by playing Najila. So if Najila is good, I have no other effects. I will pass the turn. Move to my turn. <laughs> that's really funny. Yeah, that's too funny not to do it. Uh, cast this top take windfall. Not paying taxes. Mm -hmm. Windfall resolves. Uh, so Mons has 11 cards, so we will draw 11. Okay. Um, land return will be this mystery first. Then I will cast a Mox Opal, not paying any taxes. Mox Opal, okay. I'll tap Mox Opal to cast a Mystic Remar. Okay, are you passing Samurai? Well, that's on the stack. Um, I will cast Deadly Rolic uh, for its alternate cost targeting Paco. Ooh, angry. Mm -hmm. Fish and play, I'll move to clean up. Discarding this basic island. Untap, upkeep trigger, heads is damage, tails, still no damage. Draw a card for turn. I'm gonna start my turn by casting this Pyroblast targeting that re uh, Mystic Remora Pontus controls. Triggers, I'll respond. Force of Neg pitching Cloud Pirates on the Red Blast, or Pirate Blast. I will continue and interact with that with a Fluster Storm on the Force of Negation. Trigger. Uh, no response to Fluster. Pyro Blast ultimately resolves, blowing up the fish. I'm gonna cast my Lotus Petal. 
I will sacrifice the Lotus Petal for a red mana. And then I'm gonna use that red floating a colors and cast a Underworld Breach. Uh, Samurai. I'll pass. We'll cast a uh, Mind Break Trap on a roll Breach. <laughs> Man, I threw up a little in my mouth there. <laughs> Seems like it. Um, you draw from pot. Yeah, I what's up? I have no response. To, uh, I will draw a card first. Uh, but after drawing a card, I sadly don't have a response to your Mind Break Trap. My Breach goes to Sad Exile. To slow down my opponents a tiny bit, we're gonna put the Tabernacle at the Pendricle Veil into play. And then I have no further effects on this turn. Discarding these cards and uh, passing the turn. Untap. Upkeep. Do we want to pay one for the Rog? Nope. You can go to Grave. Silly Rog Rack. Let's go ahead. This goes up to two. Boy, oh boy, we have so many cards in hand. I guess we'll go up to, we'll up take this by two, thrall or so. Uh, Diabolic Intent, sacrificing a thrall. Type it in. Easy hour. Full. Two grave. Ah, uh, I need some, I need to build up some defense for next turn. Uh, defense grid. And then I will cast Worldly Tutor. Um, we will grab Derevi. Put on top of my library. Big surprise. I would like to crack my mystic. Thought Scour, come on. Finding a underground sea, tapping it to Fatal Push Nagila. I will show you a deflecting swat. Oh. I can't pay tax either. I pass on spots. I have a response to deflecting swat. This was literally the card afterwards. I'm going to cast the Force of Will, pitching this synthetic destination, trying to counterspell the deflecting swat. No response. So Nagila is deflecting swat, is, deflecting swat is countered and. The G light goes back to the command. My defense grid resolves. Swamp, Lotus Petal, Crack Lotus Petal for red. Underworld Breach, Underworld Breach resolves. We'll exile the City of Traitors. Uh, we'll move this Rog Rack to the command zone. We'll exile this Phyrexian Tower. And play this uh, Lion's Eye Demon. We're going to crack it for three black. Crack it for three black. We're going to go ahead and get this Diabolic Intent. Sacrificing this uh, token. Exiling Tybalt's Trickery, the City of Brass, and the Snow-Covered Mountain. Yeah, I drew two basics. With the Diabolic Intent, we're going to get a lovely grinding station. Uh, we're going to cast Lion's Eye Diamond, we're going to crack it, then we're going to exile the other three to get the uh, grinding station. So here's the combo. When grinding station enters the battlefield, it's going to have it's gonna have a trigger to untap it. In response to that trigger, I'm going to tap and sacrifice my Mox Opal and mill three cards. Now, those three cards and Mox Opal are going to go to Grave. Grinding Station is then going to untap and fulfilling its uh, trigger. Then I'm going to cast Mox Opal, exiling three cards from my grave. Grinding Station is going to have an untap trigger. In response to that, I'm going to tap Mox Opal and add a black mana. Then I'm going to sacrifice Mox Opal while that trigger is while the Grinding Station trigger is still on the stack. Again, mill it. I'm going to do this until I find my Professor Onyx, and I have Chain of Smog already in grave. So all I need is eight mana for this. So now we've got the Professor Onyx uh, Chain of Smog loop. I'm gonna target myself a Chain of Smog, which is target player discards two cards from his or her hand. That player may copy the spell and may choose new targets for that copy. Now Professor Onyx says whenever a spell is cast or copied, each opponent loses two life and I gain two life. So I'm gonna repeat Chain of Smog until all my opponents are dead. GG's. I didn't expect Samurai to actually go for it. I thought it was crazy and we're gonna pass the turn. So clear misplay from me. I should not have countered Deflecting Swat from Rhetoric. I should have a Forced of Will the Defense Grid from Samurai instead and then draw into interaction that I can use on the Underworld Breach afterwards. Misplay by me. Mm. Technically, that windfall lost us the game, but I still think it was the right call because Rhystic wouldn't be enough there to like grind the game because we were far, too far behind already. But yeah, that's how it goes. So close, but we got outgrinded and outgridded, I guess. Good game. I was hoping people would get greedy. How often do you see a Rakdos deck win on like four mana? They thought I was probably going for like a Polymorphos, and I only had two mana. I had no mana open, so they really thought I had nothing. But uh, I had everything.